Hi friends, a very warm welcome back to our channel. I'm Chanda Mama. This is Chanda Mama bringing you a new story today published in the Chanda Mama magazine. The title of the story is The Good Priest. <clears throat> in a certain village, there was a priest in charge of a temple. Being kind-hearted man, he would treat the common elements of the poor, arbitrate disputes, console those who were in trouble. He made himself popular. Along with his aged mother, he lived in the small house that stood near the temple. He had neither wife nor child. The temple had a property of two acres and he lived on the income from that land. He saved whatever he used to get from the villagers every now and then. He had been the temple priest for over 20 years and the villagers either held him in great respect or looked upon him as a father. In the same village, there lived a peasant called Kanaka. He started life as a poor man, lost his father in his childhood, herded sheep to maintain himself, then became an agricultural labor and managed to save money pie by pie. This money which he saved by starving himself, he invested in the milk business and other trades. Soon he became one of the rich men of the village, but built a good house for himself and acquired lands. Of all the villagers belonging to his rank, Kanaka was easily the richest. Everyone admired his capacity for thriving out, but no one liked him for his extreme greed. He had a bad name as a miserly man. Even after becoming rich, he would count every pie he spent and spent the minimum upon clothing and food. Besides starving himself, he starved his wife and son too. Govin was the only son of Kanaka. He was a marriageable boy. Kanaka had two sisters and both of them had daughters, one of whom could become Govin's wife. Of the two girls, Kamala, the daughter of Kanaka's younger sister, was a beauty and a good-natured girl too. Govin was very anxious to marry her, but Kamala's mother was a destitute. After her husband died, she did course to support herself and her daughter. <clears throat> Kanaka's elder sister was better off. Her husband had a tract of land of which he had sold a portion to Kanaka for a hundred rupees. Of which he had sold a portion to Kanaka for a hundred rupees. Kanaka still owed him the money. Being a miserly man, Kanaka decided to marry his elder sister's daughter Lakshmi to Govin and keep the 100 rupees as dowry. As soon as Govin learned that his father intended to marry him to Lakshmi and not Kamala, he went to see the priest and told him everything. I don't see why you should worry yourself, the priest said. Go to your father and tell him straight that you want to marry Kamala alone. <clears throat> if I say that, Govind said, my father will drive me out. Oh, he can be very mean about money. He would never sacrifice a hundred rupees under any circumstance. As for my younger aunt, she never can give me even a pie of dowry. It looks as though I am not destined to marry Kamala. Speak to your mother, the priest Advise the boy, if she fails to change your father's mind, we shall try some other source. Govind went away disappointed. That evening, the priest was sitting in the pavilion in the temple yard when he saw someone go up the steps in the dark and enter the temple. He too went in and saw Kamala kneeling before the deity and praying. He saw tear stains on her cheeks and felt an odd sensation in his heart. The priest was immersed in deep thought for a long time after Kamala departed and then he came to a decision. He woke up early next morning and counted the money he had been saving over the years. Keeping back only a small fraction of it, he took the rest of the money and started for the town. Here he went to a goldsmith and bought 50 gold coins with his money and returned back to his village. Kanaka was surprised to see the priest pay him a visit. You are welcome, sir, he said. It must be something important that has brought you to my house. I want your advice. 
the priest said, <clears throat> taking a seat, a charitable person has given into my hands 50 gold coins on condition that I bestow it upon a maid of marriageable age. He had no daughters of his own. <clears throat> I am an old teacher myself. So how can I decide who is the most deserving maid? <clears throat> it would be improper to seek the advice of those who have daughters. Now, you are a man of the world. So, I have come for your advice. Kanaka pretended to think. He mentioned certain girls, but all of them happened to be either married or rich or of doubtful character. The priest shook his head at each name. Why? said Kanaka as though he had just thought of it. There is my elder sister's daughter, Lakshmi. She is not very rich. She is a good girl and not married yet. If it comes to that, the priest said, is not your other niece Kamala more deserving than Lakshmi? Her poor mother has to slave to keep herself and the girl alive. I think that we shall give this gold to Kamala. Yes, she seems to be correct person. I shall make up on my mind in a day or two. In the meantime, will you keep this gold for me? You see, I have no iron safe with me. As he said these words, the priest undid his bundle and revealed the shining coins. The gold dazzled Kanaka. With the utmost respect, gathered them and locked them up in the safe. The whole day, the luster of gold would not go out of his eyes. How fine his safe looked with the gold inside it. In a day or two, the gold would be taken away and the safe would be never the same again. That evening, Govind paid the priest another visit. Did you tell your father that you are going to marry Kamala and none else? The priest asked the young man. No, I did not. Govind replied, it will be of no use. My mother too said the same thing. It seems Kamala has not touched food since yesterday. The priest suppressed a chuckle and pretended to get angry with Govind. You fool, he hissed. Are you going to let poor Kamala starve to death? Go to your father at once and demand that you should marry Kamala. Your father dare not refuse you. Those words of the priest put some courage into Govind. He went home and said to Kanaga, Father, I will not marry Lakshmi. Let me marry Kamala. If I can't marry her, I prefer to remain unmarried. At first, Kanaka was taken by surprise. But on the second thoughts, he felt that everything was happening for the best. The fact was, ever since the priest had said that he intended giving the gold to Kamala, Kanaka knew no mental peace. He worried himself as to how to, he could change the priest's mind and get him to give the gold to Lakshmi. Now that Govind expressed a desire to marry Kamala, Kanaka felt great relief. The gold would now be his. It was a stroke of luck that Govind should suddenly decide to marry Kamala. He had never uttered her name before. All right, son, he said at last. If you really want to marry Kamala, I am not the one to stand in your way. The same day, he sent for his younger sister and told her about his intention of marrying his son to her daughter, Kamala. Lakshmi's father heard about the new decision. He went to Kanaka and asked him, have you not agreed to have my Lakshmi for a daughter-in-law? Why did you change your mind? I never changed my mind, Kanaga replied. To me, both the girls are the same. Only Govind insisted on marrying Kamala. What could I do? Soon the marriage took place. The priest bestowed the 50 gold coins on the bride, but not a soul in the village knew how the good priest had brought about the marriage of Kamala and Govind. So, this was the story the good priest published in the Chandamama magazine. Till I come back with a new story and a new episode, till then stay safe and take care. This is your Chandamama signing off from your channel.